Yeah, iFlow is an internet marketing company. Uh, we're based out of Pittsburgh. It's an umbrella of several different companies. So I started uh, as a serial entrepreneur back in 2001, starting different online entities, doing uh, everything from Red Bull straight from Thailand uh, to neon signs to real estate, breathalyzer keychains. And iFlow is always the parent company that was kind of funding these startups. Um, and then it became, it started growing as more of our um, startups became successful. People wanted to hire myself and my company to start doing online marketing for them. So we kind of just grew from there. We were one of the first online marketing companies in Pittsburgh. So uh, locally, we just dominate. Uh, it really changes. I mean, we deal with um, several Fortune 500s and we still deal with small mom and pop shops that may have uh, small law firms, uh, contracting firms. But uh, some of our flagship clients, EDMC, Giant Eagle, uh, we do work with Hertz Rent-A-Car, Office Depot, uh, really everything and everything. So in travel, we're really well known. In education, we're really well known. And a big part of it is we use the same tactics that their competitors use to kind of steal traffic from them. We help insulate them from getting used and abused essentially by pay-per-click campaigns or people registering their um, uh, their profiles against them. So they may register a local in education. It's very it's there's a lot of these resellers out there. So what we'll do is kind of protect them from all the little tricks that these resellers of leads try to do and protect the client. And uh, because of that, as soon as we get involved in an industry, we, we typically blossom pretty quickly in it. Uh, one of the biggest things is not utilizing your title tags for your actual site yourself. If you do a search for almost anything, you'll notice that the title tag on the first page of results seven to nine of those on the front page are going to use the keyword you're searching for in the title tag. And I don't think people utilize that enough. Your title tag is so important, not abusing it in keyword stuffing, but writing good descriptive title tags. Um, that's something I, I see often overlooked where people just use their company name or something, uh, the same title tag on every page. That's a huge issue I see. Not registering your locals like Google local, Yahoo local. That I just... Uh, it's free. It takes a few minutes and can really help you at least on your local level gain traffic. Um, you can also, so you can basically come up twice on your, with your, uh, Google search. You can come up number one on the maps and you can come number one on the organic, but so many people don't take the time to register their locals because they see their listing and don't understand they have to verify it. Well, the search engines just announced that they are, that is a factor in their rankings now. How often you mentioned the social networking groups and things like that. Um, we've always kind of predicted that, that that was going to happen, but it's such a tough thing for companies to comprehend, uh, both big and small. Um, we work with small companies and we work with big companies and all of them think that by just registering a Facebook page or registering a Twitter account, that that's all you need to do. And you really need to stay active. You need to build followers. You need to have good education, educational content. You can't just send out hype about your company all day. You really have to be an educational resource. And I think across the board, so many people don't understand how to utilize a social network in order to help them gain business. They look at success as gaining more followers, but they don't know what that means. What's the ROI on that? They have no idea. They just know they want more followers. And that's that's a dangerous um thing to assume that because you're getting followers that you're going to make more money. And so what we try to do is steer our clients into, well, okay, you're getting more followers. What now? And what are you, how are you trying to generate business from those followers versus your website? And, and just trying to make the client think through from start to finish, which many times they don't. So many companies, they have no PR strategies, they have no advertising, they have no plans to really brand themselves. And what we try to do is get our personality across and our branding. One thing we did was we got the city of Pittsburgh to rank on the first page of Google if you type in the best city in the world. And of course, locally, we got a lot of, uh, we got on the front page of our local paper and all of this publicity, but it really showed the local people that, yeah, we're, we're working to help our local, our city. We're putting in time and effort to do things that not just gets our name out there, but it gets it helps the whole community as a whole. 
And I think a lot of companies just don't even think about helping local communities or their industry. And I like to merge my marketing with also helping my local community because I think it always comes back to help you tenfold. But a lot of companies just, I think, overlook and just buy billboards. Uh, that was my first legitimate business. I found a company down in Florida that was just starting off. Um, I was importing things from out of the country around that time. Just had this little website, uh, importing, importing cool things I thought from Japan and Korea and trying to bring new products over, making a little bit of a markup. And then I found this awesome product that was actually saving lives um, based out of Florida. It was a small company, three-person shop. So basically took ec equity within the company. They couldn't afford to hire me. Took equity and then worked on equity. So I uh, got a percent, became a master distributor, uh, distributing, distributing the products online through all different types of channels. And uh, it was a great piece because I learned a lot, but probably not the most profitable thing to get into selling keychains. But uh, I learned a lot. I made a lot of good connections. And, um, you know, it, it was fun to do. I felt like I was making a difference. I was I think I was 21 years old. So Yeah, I was actually uh, not just nominated. I was a finalist last year, which is pretty cool. Um, I was one of the youngest, I think, <laughs> that was there. Um, it was really cool. I mean, I, I honestly thought I didn't have, I didn't think I had a chance at all. And the person I lost to, I think his company was something like 30 times the size of mine. Um, but what they gauged you, gauged you on was just basically your entrepreneurial spirit, which I thought was really cool. It wasn't all about income. Um, it was more about your drive to be an entrepreneur. And I have a lot of success stories and I have a lot of failure stories where uh, when I tell people all the different things I've been through to get to where I am, it, you know, you think you're talking to a 50 year old business vet. I've been in multi-million dollar lawsuits over several years in several states tracking money outside the country. I've been closed on by the government for just with the keychains for not getting proper paperwork and insurances. Um, you know, I learned a lot by the time I'm, I'm 29 years old. And uh, I think that the Ernst Young really respected that, that uh, most people would have given up or said, this isn't for me. And uh, I just keep going at it. Yeah, I, in high school, I was I just was not a good student. I always had my own little hustles going on, um, whether it was on weekends, traveling to different festivals and shows and selling food at festivals. During school, I had a whole business selling uh, discounted hostess pies where I bought them about a week before they expired. Filled my parents' garage with crates of pies and we're selling them for eight times markup because they're about to expire. So uh, I college for me, I, I lasted about two weeks at a four year college. And then uh, I went to an associate trade school just to, to brush up on my web design. Went there for, took two years. I graduated in uh, 14 months uh, by taking double classes. And then, yeah, just went straight into starting my own company, my own consulting. Uh, took a few little gigs, part time gigs um, with marketing on the side. But uh, by the time I was 19 years old, I had a full fledged internet marketing company one person deep, but yeah, it was exciting. I really think it's all about just not giving up. I mean, so many people I talk to when you ask why aren't they doing what they were doing or, you know, why are you getting out of being an entrepreneur? Why are you getting out of your business? They all seem to say because they had this big epic failure. And I, I mean, that just for me, I learn it as I use it as a learning experience and say, I'll never make that mistake again. And it's burned in my head. Um, so for me, I think stubbornness has something to do with it, too. If someone says I can't do something, I just want to do it, um, which I think is a, a trait you definitely need. Optimism is the other thing that I've noticed is, is different with me versus my employees is that. I'm always 100% optimist, op, op, uh, optimist, 100% uh, optimist. Uh, I think everything's going to work. I'm just 100% convinced that anything I do is going to succeed. And if it doesn't, uh, you know, I, I sometimes hit that point where maybe I should have cut off a little bit earlier. But I think as an entrepreneur, you need to have that excitement because others will feed off of your excitement. You can't go in thinking anything's not going to work or it, it will never work. And I think those are some of the traits that I have that uh, have helped me get to where I am.